As you can tell, we've moved. We are now at Lobster Harbour and I've seen two campers on my way up here going down so whether we have neighbours tonight or not I don't know but doing what we do you can't expect to have the place to yourself so one waterfall off the list and now I'm going up the viewpoint I will switch you on when I get there because apparently the path is quite precarious and there you can see Lebster Harbour and there's a truck just arrived so it mutes any arguments about how on earth can you get Desmond down there because he's at least three times the size of us and he got here uh, David is out videoing a bit too close to the harbour wall for my liking but he's probably further away than he looks from here and in the far distance Sorry, I've got flies on me. Um, there is another wind farm out to sea. And I'm not sure you'll be able to pick it up, even though I am in as close as I can get. There are two oil rigs, three, sorry, three oil rigs out there. And more wind farms. But I believe this is a viewpoint. And there's a sign going the other way saying Brethren Well. And I wonder if he's spotted me. So. I inadvertently dropped his camera, his video camera last week, and the shutter's not working properly. So. I bought my new one. And he's testing it out. But I will switch you back on in a little while. At the minute I want to take some more pictures. We've moved from Camster. We're at uh, Lipster Harbour. Those who've been here will recognise the light in the narrow harbour entrance. We'll keep an eye out and see what we can see and bring you more from this lovely little harbour. On the top of Libster Harbour, right beside the lighthouse.
Lidster was begun as a planned village in 1802 by the local landowner, General Patrick Sinclair. His sons fought at the Battle of Waterloo and in their honour he named the section of Main Street where it met what is now the A99, Quatre Bras. Development of the village was continued by one of those sons, Captain Temple Sinclair. He had a keen interest in politics and was a strong supporter of the Whig party. In the 1830s he named five of the streets in the village after leading Whig politicians of the day. Gray's Place, Althorpe Street, Althorpe Court, Jeffrey Street and Russell Street. The name of the nearby Union Street seems to have been equally political in its origins. But to find the reason for Lipsa's existence you need to pass through the village and turn right its seaward end and then descend the steep and narrow road to Lipster's Harbour. En route, look out for the Inver House about halfway down. It's on the hill to your left. This is an unusual appearance having a line of crenellations along one wall head. Alongside the harbour of Lipster is one of the area's major attractions, the nice restored buildings housing water lines. Development of harbour facilities began with a wooden pier in the 1790s and continued at intervals throughout the 1800s, with ever larger harbours being built to accommodate ever larger fleets of fishing boats. By 1859 there were 357 boats fishing from Libster, making it the third busiest fishing port in Scotland after Wick and Fraserburgh, and the industry employed some 1500 fishermen and even more people on the land. The herring boom was largely over by the time the Wick and Libster light railway built in the ill-timed attempt to profit from the boom arrived in 1899. During a large part of the 1900s, Libster supported a successful white fish fleet, but this too has gone, leaving a much quieter place now, home to a number of smaller fishing boats catching lobsters and crabs. As a result, there is still a lot of evidence of fishing in terms of the boats moored at the harbour and the lobster pots and other fishing gear piled around it. This is really superb working harbour in a stunning setting between flanking grassy headlands. harbour seems to have quietened down now. People who were fishing and loading boats have done that. So there's a chance to get out and record something of the buildings and boats at Lipster Harbour. I to look at this boat in the harbour. Not because of the boat itself, but as we get zoomed in, There's one swallow. 
They seem to be heading for under the pier at this point. Give it a few seconds. And see if any of them decide to pop in or out. There's one, two. They're a little bit lower than I'm looking at them, aren't they? Let's bring the boat into a shot. There you go. This is a, a great harbour. There's an inner harbour, uh, an outer inner harbour, an inner outer harbour and an outer harbour, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, I don't either. But this is an inner inner harbour. This is what you would normally call the inner harbour, for me anyway, and hopefully we'll pick up the swallows drinking while we're going round. This, I suppose it's the middle harbour, or outer inner harbour, <laughs> and then further along towards the light is the outer harbour, and then the harbour entrance.
thank you for watching Desmond's Donuts. And remember, please take nothing but memories and leave nothing but tracks. Please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications and hopefully we'll see you next time.